19th century may go down in human history as the century of deceptions. Because in that period, many philosophies with no scientific basis, such as Marxism, were imposed on mankind. But the greatest deception of the 19th century was the theory of evolution put forward by the British biologist called Charles Darwin. In his book, The Origin of Species, published in 1859, Darwin suggested that all living things in nature had come about as the result of blind chance. This theory appeared quite believable given the primitive level of 19th century science, and it was soon widely accepted. However, modern scientific discoveries have demolished Darwin's claims. Paleontology, the science of fossils, shows that different living groups appeared on the Earth suddenly and underwent no evolution over hundreds of millions of years. Anatomy and biochemistry have proven that there are very complex structures in living things and that these cannot come about by chance. And biological observations have revealed that nature does not possess the alleged mechanisms to transform species into one another. For these reasons, Darwinism today is a theory that has scientifically collapsed. Animals' intelligent behavior that we have observed in this film is another important fact that overturns the theory of evolution. Evolutionists call the intelligent behavior that animals exhibit without undergoing any special training instinct. but they cannot explain the origin of instinct. In his book, The Origin of Species, Darwin devoted a whole section to the subject. At the very start of this section, entitled Instinct, he admits how deadly the intelligent behavior in animals is to his theory. So wonderful an instinct as that of the hive bee making its cells will probably have occurred to many readers as a difficulty sufficient to overthrow my whole theory. Darwin was especially baffled by the architectural skills of the honeybee and asked himself, what shall we say to so marvelous an instinct as to that which leads the bee to make cells, which have practically anticipated the discoveries of profound mathematicians? The answer Darwin gave to this question was habit. He suggested that a living creature developed a habit over the course of its life, then passed this habit on to its offspring. Thus, an inherited instinct developed over time. Darwin was basing this argument on the theories of the French biologist Lamarck, who lived before him. But the science of genetics, which developed in the 20th century, showed that Lamarck's theories were pure nonsense and that no living thing can pass on a feature or a habit it has acquired during its lifetime to the next generation. This proved that Darwin's explanation of instinct was based on mistaken guesswork. Another dilemma instinct poses to the theory of evolution is the problem that animals possess instinct from the moment they are born. An animal which lacked the necessary instinct would be unable to survive. An offspring which did not possess the instinct of sucking its mother's milk would be unable to live. This demonstrates that instinct 
cannot have come about by stages over time, as evolutionists claim. For all these reasons, instinct is a fact capable of demolishing the theory of evolution all by itself, as Darwin had feared. In his book, The Great Evolution Mystery, the evolutionist writer Gordon Taylor makes this confession. When we ask ourselves how an instinctive pattern of behavior arose in the first place and became hereditarily fixed, we are given no answer. It is really impossible for evolutionists to explain where instinct comes from, because the source is not coincidences, as they think, but the inspiration God gives to living things. The honey bees, which make flawless hexagonal combs. Beavers, which build dams with fine engineering calculations. Termites, which erect complicated skyscrapers with their blind eyes. Weaver birds. Wild bees, which make apartment blocks out of paper. And thousands of other expert architects in nature. By exhibiting these surprising works of architecture, these creatures reveal to us the skills which are actually given to them by God. Each one of them acts by God's inspiration, as is announced in a verse of the Quran. There is no creature he does not hold by the forelock. Yet there is still another creature that brings forth architectural marvels with the inspiration and skills given him by God, to whom the most marvelous works in the world belong. That creature is man. Many people today are unaware of this fact. And in the face of people's achievements, they only feel amazement for those people themselves. Whereas it is God who gives a human being his body, emotions, intelligence, and who inspires in him the senses of art and aesthetics. The marvelous works which people see as man's masterpieces are actually a manifestation of God's infinite art and knowledge. For this reason, the real one we should truly praise in the face of every kind of aesthetic beauty and splendor that we see is the almighty God, who created all these notions and who inspires these as he wishes in the living things he creates. He reveals this fact in a verse of the Quran. All praise belongs to God, the Lord of the heavens and the Lord of the earth, Lord of all the worlds. All greatness belongs to him in the heavens and earth. He is the almighty, the all-wise. <laughs> 